So today we're looking at Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 32. This is the story of the lost son. And in this parable, just like in all the others that Jesus told, he's, he's addressing two different audiences in, uh, in this story, that those who are listening in, right? He's addressing those who are tax collectors and sinners and those who are part of the religious crowd. And so today I want to look at what did Jesus have to say to those who were considered to be the sinners, the tax collectors and the outcasts and those who were not a part of the religious community. And obviously it's quite easy to see, right, that it's the younger son in this story who would have related to the story of those sinful people uh, listening. And they would have identified very quickly with him with the wrong choices and the wrong things they made. I've never met a sinner who didn't know they were a sinner. It's only the church people who have a hard time admitting that they're actually not too great. But I guarantee you, you find somebody who's not gone into church. I can go to the pub on a Friday night, back when I was allowed to go to the pub on a Friday night, and everybody in the room is, oh, I can never go into church. God would strike me dead. Nobody's, anybody who's made uh, significantly wrong choices in their lives, they have no trouble identifying themselves as the worst of sinners. Oh yeah, they can see it right away. And so surely here in this story, they, they don't need all the detail about all the wrong things that this younger son did. But you know what is absolutely, absolutely would have riveted their attention is what does the father do when he tries to come home? That is the hardest conversation. When I'm down at the pub, the hardest conversation I have with people is to convince them that it is perfectly safe for them to come to church, that God doesn't hate them, that nothing bad is gonna to happen to them, that they aren't gonna be struck dead the minute they step over the threshold. And they, there's all these perceptions of what will the Father do? What does God really think of me? And that's what I want us to see in this story. You see, we talked about on Sunday, obviously, that the Father had compassion and that he ran out waiting watching for this son to come home but it didn't just stop there you see the son had a speech prepared and he said he was going to apologize and say just let me be a slave in your household but the father doesn't even he doesn't even address it it's like he can't even hear what he says and instead he wraps him up in his arms and then he immediately he calls his servants and he asks them to bring the best rope that they have and a ring and those things would have been representative of position and authority, that this is my son, and he's got all the authority of a son in a household. And he says, make sure that you bring sandals for his feet. You see, at that time, a person who was a slave in a household wouldn't have worn shoes on their feet. Only a son would have done that. And, and without ever saying a word, just by how he greets him and clothes him, the father is making it clear, you're no slave and you're not outcast and you're not less than just because you made a mistake. You are loved and welcomed and you are given the same position and authority as any son. And then he kills the fattened calf, right? And he throws him a party. The message to the outcast, I mean, you can just imagine the absolute stunning awe that you would have felt to identify with somebody who'd made such terrible mistakes to the point of wishing such a loving father dead and to come home and to recognize that what Jesus is saying is that God welcomes you in. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how far you've gone. If you're just willing to come home, you will be welcomed in as a son or a daughter. You will be given the same uh, position and love. You're not less than, you're not somehow condemned. You're not looked down on or judged, no matter what the religious people around you have made you feel. Right? This is what Jesus is saying. It doesn't matter what these people have made you feel. What your heavenly Father says is you can always come home and you will always be welcome here. You won't be a slave, but you'll be welcomed as a child of God, fully given position and authority. I don't know who's listening to these devotions. Uh, maybe, maybe you have a friend who just shared this with you. Uh, what I want to encourage you is if you read the story of the lost son, it's Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 32. There's a little link below the video. You could click on it and you could read that story for yourself. And when you read it, if you can identify with that younger son and you think, yep, I've made those kind of choices too. I've made those same mistakes. And if you've ever been in a position where you worried what God might think, what his response might be, I just want to extend the invitation that I know your Heavenly Father extends, and that is just come home.